GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight tonight from that city you see below you. That's called New York, New York. The city so nice they named it twice. Everybody, this is Ed Cramp. We talked to him uh, a while back, and we're talking to him again. And uh, during the break, we were talking about health. You know, when two older people get together, it becomes an organ recital. <laughs> you know, we we start talking about oh, so what did you have? And I had this, and I've got this, and. You know, I, 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 I trump everybody. I, I had cancer twice, you know. So, But, you know, at my age, I wake up in the morning and say, what is it going to get me, you know? And I always ask the doctors, like my uh, the guy for the uh, leukemia, I said to him, well, I said to the guy for the prostate, I said, is this the thing that's going to kill me? And he looked at me and he went, no, like you idiot. And that it was the same answer I got from the leukemia guy. Is this the thing that's going to kill me? No. You know, I keep waiting for that thing. What is it going to be? You know, something's got to get me. And I just feel like there's this, uh, you know, Mr. Death over my shoulder with his scythe looking at me saying, come on, come on. You know. Well, you've got hundreds of thousands of people who care about you and, you, and you're still very important in their lives. So we got to keep you around. we got to keep you healthy. Yeah, well, I'm uh, I am based. I'm healthy. I'm I'm more just tired a lot, you know. And I guess that's uh, at 84, you should feel tired a lot. But I don't want to. It's not how I've felt all my life, you know. So when it starts slowing down, you start worrying about it. But we were talking about, you know, uh, how th- it, it, talking to you. I guess people get a real insight into what it's like to run a radio station. And in your case. You never found it a hell of a lot of fun, did you? Well, well I did. I, I just went through a stage, I think I told you, at, at Live 105 when um, when everyone was having a good time because we changed the format and I wasn't up front with the owners, so I always had that in the back of my mind that uh, uh, that I was lying and I wasn't, I wasn't being true to myself. And it, it, it bothered me. Stuff like that really bothered me. And uh, because I could not... Uh, wholeheartedly let them know this is who we are, this is what we do, this is how outrageous and crazy our morning show is. By the way, my morning guy wants to interview Louis Farrakhan. Is that okay with you? You know, those kinds of things. Um, it, it was difficult. Plus, all the agenda around um, kind of what you were, your, your content and your comics who were there as guests and they say some outrageous things and they'd go up to the line, they'd maybe go over and then they come back and they go over the line and they come back. And then when they leave, I had to go clean up the mess. <laughs> yes. Chinese for affirmative action every time Slayton was on and, uh, and, and, and glad. And, and, and as I said, you know, deal with all the advertisers who were getting, uh, who were getting letters, not emails at their time or texts at their time. There's no social media, but uh, complaints uh, about uh, the content of our show. And I've always believed I'm a First Amendment guy, so I've always believed that uh, God put uh, the on-off button on a radio station for a reason, you know. And uh, I, I used to love the, the calls I used to get about you that they were going to complain to the FCC because you were so horrible, and they'd never never listen to you again. And then a day later, well, here's what he said today, and then a day later, here's what he said today. <laughs> so it was like they couldn't stop, you know, listening to you. Yeah. And. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, but I mean, you know, having to deal with that. I mean, and we did we did make kind of make little messes for you. I mean, they were little ones, you know. Well, you know, back at that back in those days, and this was like in, in the eighties, uh, a general manager ran one radio station, just one. So all I had to do was run one. Years later, in the Bay, going back to the Bay Area and running a uh, uh, Clear Channel at that time. I ran seven in San Francisco and three in San Jose. I ran 10 radio stations. 
And then they gave me regional responsibility. And at some point I was up to 280 stations. Oh, Jesus. So, so you can't, uh, you know, and then, you know, I'm, I'm in L.A. and I'm running seven radio stations. So the, 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 you can't give seven radio stations, 10 radio stations, the same uh, uh, treatment or the same attention as you as you have right. one. Right, right. Let me can I can I give you an example of something? This will trigger a memory for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was 1987, maybe 1988. So you used to do used to do breakfast with Bennett. Everybody mm -hmm. knows those yeah. big events that we used to have uh, at various clubs around the Bay Area. But on Christmas time, you did something special. It was a Monday night in December. We did dinner with Schwarzman. Supper with Schwarzman. Supper with Schwarzman. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and we're at the Fairmont Venetian Room. Dick Brighton, his orchestra, the comics, the whole thing. It was a big deal. I mean, yeah. it's really, really big. So I had invited some clients from Los Angeles to come up. I know the story up. you're going to tell. Go ahead. Yeah. Some clients from Los Angeles to come up, along with their national reps to come on, uh, on board as well. So because I'm running one radio station, okay, I can deal with all this stuff. And I, I, I sit and I make the reservations for them to fly on, remember, PSA Airlines. To come up on that Monday night on the 3.30 flight from Los Angeles. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're all scheduled to come up on the 3.30 flight from Los Angeles. We're going to pick them up in a limo. We're going to bring them to the Fairmont. So they'll be there for the start of the show, which mm -hmm. I think started at 6 mm -hmm. o'clock. So around that Wednesday before the Monday, I'm thinking 3.30. Let's see. There's going to be traffic coming up to 101. To you know what? I'm going to put them on the three o'clock flight. I'm going to switch the flight. Right. Because I want them to get there earlier, not later. So what happened was we're waiting at the Fairmont. I'm, yeah, at the Fairmont Venetian room. We're waiting for the group to come up from Los Angeles. And we hear that a plane went down in the Santa Barbara Hills, a PSA jet. It was actually, it was actually hijacked. But by a former employer, an mm -hmm. employee uh, on the plane. But my point was, my first instinct was, oh, my God, I kill these people by switching the flight. <laughs> yes. Okay? I kill these people. How am I going to live the rest of my life with that on me? Okay? I, I already told you I take things very hard. Well, it turned out that the, the 3 o'clock flight that they were on landed fine. The 3.30 flight that they were scheduled to be on before I moved right. them was the one that crashed. So in essence, I saved their lives. And there are several people on that plane who I'm still in touch with. Actually, I hired a sales manager in Los Angeles, Carol Terakawa, who was on that flight. I hired her. There were, there were media buyers in Los Angeles that I never missed a buy from for the rest of my career because, because I had moved that flight. But the point is, if I was running 10 radio stations, they'd be dead because I wouldn't have had that focus and that attention to move that flight and even think about it. It would have right. been enough. I would have given it. Right. I would have delegated it to but, somebody but else. But literally, literally, if they had been on that other flight, they all would have been dead. You would have That's killed right. our advertisers. Yes. Should have been a terrible thing. Uh, uh, terrible. Horrible. Yeah. But it is, it, it's one of the things in my career I look at and just say, wow, you know, that happened. And life happens and shit happens. But going back to your question about running a radio station mm -hmm. when you ran one radio station that was your baby you, you 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 woke up in the morning thinking about it you listened to it all day long you went to sleep thinking about it and yep. you did everything you could to improve the ratings the quality improve the sales the marketing everything else it's all that mattered that was your whole life yeah and then then you're like with 10 other radio stations and you have a conservative station a liberal station a uh, a, a, a country station, a smooth jazz station. I mean, you got to keep moving around and, uh, uh, and and try to understand it all. And uh, that that's challenging. And uh, actually, that was those were good times too. They, they really were. Yeah, they were. But you know what happened was that the, the, the second time you fired me was yeah. when you went over to Clear Channel and you had all right. these stations, but you needed somebody to do. Here, here's what happened. I was working at, I lost uh, my job over at, uh, where, where did I lose it? And then I got, well, at Live 105. 
And then I went up to work with my friends at Play TV up in Sacramento to start the world's first internet video channel, okay? Uh, you got to remember, I invented uh, podcasts. Mm -hmm. I did them when I was out of work. And, and I literally created a pro had somebody created a program for me where you could put it on your computer and it would go to my site. And if it saw there was a new program, it would download it. So when you came home, you had fresh Alex Bennett waiting for you. So what does that sound like? Anyway, I, I go over and I get a job. They asked me to come over to CNET. Remember CNET? You should remember it because one of your cha stations. 910 AM. 910. Yeah. They did what was called an LMA, which is they rent the channel from the owner. And then yeah. they do whatever they're going to do. Well, they fired me finally. They got rid of me because I wasn't serious enough for their channel. Right? And they had a bad game plan anyway. They thought that, you know, we're, we're playing to the... Um, internet, prof the um, tech, tech professional, that was how they put it. And I'm going, you do realize, this is when the whole collapse was happening in Silicon Valley. I said, you do realize there are no tech professionals left who have a job. Uh, but anyway, they let me go. Two weeks later, they give up the channel. They turn it back to you guys. Well, they stopped paying their LMA fee. That's they started happened. paying their LMA fee. So immediately, Clear Channel takes it back. And then you call me and say, would you come down here and do the morning show for a while till we figure out what we're going to do with it? So basically, two weeks after I was fired, I was back on that same channel. I felt I, I felt very satisfied with Did that. Did I pay you? Did I pay you for that? You paid me for it. Yeah, okay. yeah. I I don't know how much, but you know. You mean you don't know how little? I'll I'll tell you what, you what it did is because at that time all this, a lot of stations were in one place. In yeah. other words, your competition could be in a, a studio down the hall. Okay, so I would take a break, you know, on the hour when the news went on or whatever. And I would go into the hall, and so would Jim Lang, who was working at, uh, I can't remember, KSFO? KBLA. Okay. I, I can't remember. There were so many stations there. And we would sit there talking for like five minutes. I loved him. Because he politically, did you know he was a big left winger? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't talk to him that much. I, I was uh, very respectful of him. I went on a cruise. Uh, a station cruise with him and his wife. Yeah. And as much as I was excited about going on a, a, a cruise with Jim Lang, his wife was a former Miss America. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 1960. Yeah. And he didn't meet her on the dating game, by the way. No, he, he, he didn't. <laughs> I remember her telling us that her skill on, uh, on the Miss America pageant was sewing. <laughs> sewing? <laughs> well, her name was Nancy Fleming. Yeah. That was her yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. They were, they were, Jim was a beautiful, he was a beautiful nice guy. man, really nice man. I liked him a lot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm working this thing for you, and all of a sudden, the bosses from Atlanta come in, right? Are they, were they in a station in Atlanta? Was that where they were? It was, it was, no, uh, they were in, uh, uh Oh, oh, uh, they were, uh, those guys were in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, wherever they were, the guy who ran programming is the guy that pretty much took talk shows and moved them to the right, to the extreme right. Mm -hmm. And he came into town and heard me and I think said to you, is this guy kidding? Well, he didn't understand local radio and he didn't understand who you were and what you meant to the marketplace and really what we're trying to do. So this was just one that, uh, again, uh, I'm proud of moves like that because it's different and it's, it's another shakeup. And uh, I, I just think that your, your fans were FM-based fans. And, and what we see is like 75% what, what, uh, of those people are never going to go to the AM dial. So I, I think we didn't advertise, so they weren't really going to find you. Uh, you weren't doing exactly the same show. But we just, I, I just put you on just to see if we could attract an audience. Right same time um we that station was going to be more to the right than to the left now going back to jim lang about uh, uh, a year later mm -hmm. i think uh air america came to me 
and said, we, we like to get on your station in San Francisco. And I said to him, well, my station in San Francisco cable, 960, is making about a million dollars in cash flow. That was okay, which is pretty good for an AM station. At that time, yeah. At that time. And they said, well, we'll guarantee you a million dollars and we, we'll, we, we want to put the station on. So that's what we did. So then I had, I had uh, 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 Air America on the left and then KNEW on the right. And what we tried to do at that time was, I remember we had this big promotion at City Hall where left meets right. And we had a kind of a, a fun debate. Back in those days, people on the left and people on the right, they seemed to get along a lot better. Was, right. Wasn't as, as, uh, um, as crazy as, as it's gotten now, where yeah. it's, they hate each other kind of thing like that. Gavin Newsom came in and he was the moderator. And uh, we had people from both sides, and we and it was a, we had a really nice time. It was really a nice event. Now, were you told to get rid of me? No. Then why why did you get rid of me? Because it didn't. Because we needed to put conservative programming on the station because we they had hired Michael Savage. Oh, Who okay, did. all right. So, you and Michael Savage's bookends would would probably not work really well, and uh, you'd probably wind up killing each other in the hallway, you know, doing a break. So, um, so we put him on, and uh, the station had zero ratings. There were no ratings at all. We were left with nothing. Right. And we got we got it to a two share, which is, you know, San Francisco. That's that's decent. They, they don't they don't have a one share now, you know, in San Francisco in terms of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, uh, for that. So again, it was an, an attempt to kick up some sand, and we tried. And I think I was pretty upfront with you at that time. This is. Kind well, of in the very beginning, you said I may not be able to give you this job forever. Right. Yeah, the, I need this is a temporary measure until we figure out what we're going to yeah. do. So when you let me go, I wasn't you know disappointed. It didn't come as a I wasn't blindsided by it. But I said, there goes cramp cramp again. He's got me yeah, twice. Go. You I know. know. I, I, I understand. And you then know. you then at one point we had a meeting in San Francisco when I was finally at uh, at uh, Sirius XM. Yeah. And you asked me if I knew anybody that wanted to do a morning show, and I kind of thought you were asking me, you know. Well, you know, you had a big fan of Walter Sabo at that time, who I really respect. Yeah. Walter loved you and pushed you. and uh, Yeah. And it, well, he got me my I, job at Sirius XM. I will say this. I've been doing this for 45 years, still kicking around the radio industry. And you, to, to me, are singularly the most talented, gifted person who ever sat behind a microphone that I witnessed. Really? Uh, because of your wit, uh, the way you think on your feet, I think uh, I, I think you could have made a lot more money in the industry had you been a little bit more em embraceive of, uh, of the influencer role that a lot of these guys will do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of hard for you to ingest something and say, I love this, come, come buy it, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but I have the utmost respect for you, and I would say kind of was the uh, highlight of my career of working with you. And, and again, I've, I've worked with, with, with a lot of the greats you know, through the years. I've, I've been blessed to work with almost everybody I've wanted to work with. Yeah. Uh, from, but anyway, um, at, that, at that meeting, you said, do you know anybody who wants to do it or willing to pay good money for it or whatever, whatever it takes to get somebody? And uh, I basically said no. I didn't know anybody. But I thought if I had said yes, I could do it, you probably would have said, well, when are you moving to San Francisco? You know? And, uh, but I was already at Sirius XM, and it was later in my career, and I had a job that I figured I'd have for, you know, as long as I wanted it, although I was wrong about that. But I at least lasted close to 10 years there. You know, so it was it was giving up a solid, you know, it's like I said, um, I said this about another job. I said, well, the problem is, am I going to am I going to continue to sit here and make and I just, I'll just give you a figure, one hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for the next uh, 10, 15 years? Or do I want to take a job where I'm going to make three hundred thousand dollars, but it might only last six months, you know? Uh, it's better to keep the job that's not paying you as much, you know. So, so on, on when we switched to Air America, just yeah. so you know this, 
and uh, who was the uh, morning man from Air America at the time? The, the, the comic from Saturday Night Al Live. Al Franken. And, Al Franken was well, You see, I was involved in that whole thing with, with, uh, with Air America, but yeah. I was one of the guys they never hired. In fact, they created the whole station originally for one particular personality. I can't remember who it was now. He's and by the, the time they bought the station went on the air, it had different owners, and that guy wasn't even working it. Right. Well, what we what we did there with the morning show was everything was we got to be hyper hyper local, very very local. Yeah. So what I tried to do was remember the success we had with a live studio audience. Right. Okay. So we hired Willie Brown mm -hmm. and Will Durst. Will Durst. Yeah. Keeping it real with Will and Willie in the morning, and across the street from the uh, from Willie's office, which was down by the uh, where the uh, where the ships come in or the ferries come in. Yeah, it was this new hotel that was built across the street, this Italian hotel. So we invited people to come every morning to watch the show live mm -hmm. and get free coffee and sit and watch watch a morning show. So after about two weeks, I, I keep showing up, and I kept remembering the line around the block waiting to get into your show every morning mm -hmm. on Ninth Street when we were in the wine district, wino district back in the day, and uh, no one showed up. Jeez. <laughs> oh, he, Willie Brown actually cut my ratings in half, and he was the mayor, and and supposed to be representative of the uh, you know the, the left wing community. Yeah. Now, Will was great, but uh, Willie was kind of off off topic and off subject, and we were paying him a boatload of money to to do that. Wow! So, you know, again, so all these things I was told you got to be hyper local, super local, all the other stuff. You know, it, it really didn't work. What what, what would have been more hyper local than having the mayor on, you know, your your local morning right. show? Right, but you're popular, assuming the mayor can guy. do. But you're assuming the mayor can do a radio show. You know, it's like. For instance, whenever people wanted to compete against me, they went out and hired comics to do morning shows. Well, right. comics don't work like I work. I work saying I've got to do four hours or three hours a day, five days a week, so I know how to pace myself and how to structure that. A comedian only knows how to go up for 40 minutes, and they've got 40 minutes worth of material. And 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 I a lot of these guys they hired to do morning shows that were comics ran out of material after the first half hour, you know. Well, that was George Lopez in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Well, only so many times you can make fun of Mexicans drinking beer before. Yeah, the morning. exactly. That's that was his act. That was his whole act. Yeah. What he's doing. I don't know. I don't know if you uh, did. We have Larry Brown on doing traffic. While you yeah. were there, Bubble, yeah, bubbles, yeah, yeah. So was was were you there when he had a sponsor, which was Kaiser, okay? And he said, "Brought to you by Kaiser, also known as Doctor Assisted Suicide." <laughs> no, and then probably, you heard from Kaiser. I'd, st I'd probably still be at the client's office uh, trying to get get out of it. Uh, no, I was. I, I don't believe I was there. Oh, at then that it time. may have been. It may Pat Pat may have had to deal with it. Well, you would have kissed that advertiser goodbye at that moment, but that's uh, <laughs> funny. It's a funny bit, you know. Yeah. But the beautiful, the, the, one of the great things about your show was, you know, again, you're trying to fill what twenty hours a week. Of yeah. Content. Yeah. And so, you can't be funny all the time. There's good spots, there's bad times, but people would wait for that moment, a couple of times a week, where where, it was just where magic happened. Moment. That mo magic moment that they will take away for the rest of their lives and never forget. Well, the thing know? was, what you have to do, at least in my theory, is you have to do a show that allows for that to happen. Well, where if are you, you if you're too safe, that, it'll never happen. Well, where are you going to find a show that has, uh, uh, um, what, what was the show, which was the, the um, oh boy, it was uh, Buddy Love, Singing mm -hmm. to who is the, um, the 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 actor or or, or the or the performer that uh, Doc Doc Timothy Leary and Buddy Love singing a duet together, or or Buddy Love and Karen Black singing together. You know those kinds of moments 
were, yeah. were outrageous. They were crazy. Plus, you had, you know, Bobcat on. You had Robin Williams on. I mean, we'd, we'd have everybody on. Well, and, I didn't have I uh, under uh, Live 105, Robin was never on. He was on the Quake once with me. Once. Right. You know. Well, I've lied. I was telling people. Because I always had kind of a contentious relationship with Robin because I didn't like him stealing material from other comics, which he was famous right. for doing. And uh, I, I just said, you know, I said to him once, I said, you don't do that. You just don't do that. Did he show up at one of your shows from San Francisco, one of your comic shows? He may have. You know, I, I don't remember. He, he, he was there. He was always around. But we had kind of a contentious relationship. So he never he never regularly came on my show like other comics, but I mean Bob Goldthwaite, for instance, he, his career was made on my show. You know, um, it, it, but it, but uh, it it was a wonderful time, and I thank you for having created the canvas for me sure. to work on. You know. Well, you asked me about. Um what it was like running radio stations and the whole thing. Let mm -hmm. me just tell you that it's a fabulous experience. Nobody today has the job we had 25, 30 years ago because we were in charge of everything, but we had control of everything. And so running the stations was wonderful. The thing that wasn't wonderful was working for the owners. Yeah. Because I was gonna, you know, I always said when I when I was going to retire, I was going to write a memoir. Mm -hmm. It was going to the book was going to be called "The Five Biggest Assholes I Ever Worked For," but three of them made the list twice. <laughs> to rethink the whole thing, but I've worked for every every one of them. Oh boy! And uh, uh, aside from that, the experience has been absolutely a joy and wonderful. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm real grateful. I'm real I'm one, blessed. Uh, one of the things I find most pleasant is that after all these years, and the fact that you fired me twice, we are still sitting here talking like this, and have great respect for each other. You know, uh, you were doing your job, I was doing my job, and they weren't the same job. Okay, it, it, if anybody thinks they were, they weren't. My, I was there to try and make him money. He was out there to try and go out and make the money. Okay? So, I mean, it's, it's, it was a wonderful relationship. Listen, this has been terrific, and let's do this again. Okay? You know, uh, I think people will enjoy this. They'll he enjoy hearing about radio and how it works or how it did work. It doesn't work that way anymore. And by the way, uh, uh, Ed doesn't work as a general manager anymore. He works as an, as a, what, an agent, basically? A well, I represent a fabulous talent. His name is Pialine. Mm -hmm. And he's probably most, one of the most influential Hispanic broadcasters in America today. He has been for, for the past 25 years. I consult another company called Sun and Fun Media. Mm -hmm. um, it also has a, another sister company called uh, key networks so i'm still involved tangentially in the business um i work from home i, I live in the desert in southern california indian wells and you work uh, out on your uh, on your uh, uh this thing this thing has kept me alive yeah absolutely okay yeah. hey listen yeah. let's do this soon okay and stick out. around let me talk to you after this but ladies and gentlemen that's my former boss ed cramp now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And we will have him back because I, uh, I really enjoy that. Uh, you know, I enjoy talking with him and I enjoy, well, he makes me feel a little embarrassed by how, you know, how he uh, talks about me and my meaning to him. And I, I you know... But I, you know, I used to be a big shot, folks. There, there's the guy that proves it. Okay, so, well, the other thing that proves it is we do have some people that call this program, and uh, they, uh, they are from the Bay Area, and they call this program because they remember that program. So, anyway, thanks, to Ed Cramp, and I'm going to give him a call in the next day or two, and set up another one of these uh, get-togethers because I think it's really, really cool, really terrific. We only have one person waiting right now. Is that a bit embarrassing, folks? Isn't that embarrassing? There's one person waiting to talk to me. Um, let me see here. So we'll, we'll, we'll go to the one person that's out there today. Uh, 
And where do I uh, where do I where do I do this? Oh, I know why I didn't uh, put this up. There we go. Now, oh, that no, oh, I got two people waiting now. Oh, okay. All right, all right. So both of them are there, and uh, one of them is going to be uh, Charlie Wallace, and the other one is going to be Brian Neary. And there they are. Or Brian Neary, there he is. Okay, there we got Brian Neary and we got uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Brian. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Hi. What's your shirt we say today? There's no otter like me. Oh, okay. I thought it'd be a scientific something, you know. <laughs> but, well, it's from the Georgia Aquarium. Oh, okay. Atlanta. All right. Hey, uh, Kev, Kevin's coming in today. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got a bunch. Free, of... Freeze it now. No, nobody else can come in. We're good. This is a this is a good panel, you know. I mean, uh, if I only had you guys on for the next hour, uh, I, I'd be very happy. Someone's gonna ruin it. So nobody call. Nobody else <laughs> call. Someone's gonna ruin nobody it. Nobody else. Hey, call. You know, Tony's gonna call now. What, what, what happened? What happened to Kevin? Where Where did he go? I got kicked out. Oh, no. Just come back, okay? <laughs> we allowed you in. What are you talking about? You know, uh, wait, Kevin, come on back. Or it'd be funny if he couldn't get his how do you, up. How do you do this? Let's see. How do I find? I don't know how to do this. <laughs> okay. You, my first time. He's moving his camera. He's moving his microphone out of the how way. Do I so do this? You got to be one of the first time call. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> Wow. Where is the button that I... Uh, Come on, Jeff. Stop it. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> but still, Kevin, your your camera looks so weird. You have these lines going across. Yeah, like it no, that uh, always happens when he first turns it on, and then it settles uh -huh. down and disappears. Uh, yeah, the, ham the hamster's got to get the, yeah. the engine running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on, boys. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Run, run. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, how y'all doing? You doing? I think it's his TikTok. It's his TikTok filter still on. Come on, guys. yeah, yeah. It's from all my dancing, uh, hoochie coochie dancing, hoochie coochie oh. dancing. Yeah. By the way, you Shakes said around. you said yesterday that that um, of course she has no need for us. That uh, uh, your your daughter um, was uh, doing uh, doing uh, uh, TikToks, right? Yes. I don't even know how to do TikTok. Do you know that? I know how to watch it, but I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to put myself on TikTok. It's they a weird play, platform. What? Yeah, they play like they do dances and stupid stuff. I don't. Well, know. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, but you were saying last night. I said, is she doing her hoochie coochie dances on TikTok? And you said, no way. I'm not letting her. <laughs> Are you sure of that? Have you watched closely her? <laughs> Uh, I gotta double check again. Yeah. Now you know when we say she does a hoochie coochie dance, you know she's at an age where it doesn't. She doesn't really realize the implications of that, does she? No. No. And well, they and, don't know what. Yeah. Y they. Yeah. Uh, and, and so she's just dancing like she sees people dance. You watch Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, they do this thing, and they, they do this, and they do this. They watch they Jennifer they Lopez. Music. They watch uh, Miley Cyrus. Uh, they watch any number of people, and then they're imitating that kind of dancing, but they don't realize that dancing. God, if we did that on television back in the 60s, people would get arrested. Yep. <laughs> You know, I mean, they, they they had a problem with Elvis Presley's hips, okay? Yeah. And he was fully clothed. And he was fully clothed, right? <laughs> so, you know. Um, but there's a... But you know what I saw today? I, I went on... Uh, I went to X. I don't go to X that often because I, I never... I never use Twitter much anyway, okay? And uh, I went over there, and there was somebody naked... And they were whipping her. Okay, now that's on X. So apparently, he's letting a lot of stuff through that normally wouldn't have gotten through in the old days. You know? Hmm. Did he have so, orange hair? Huh? Did he have orange hair? <laughs> 
I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Did he have orange hair? Orange he was hair? Getting whipped? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's a peen video one. <laughs> no, but I was just amazed, you know, because I, I didn't realize that he had loosened up that much over at X that he would allow that kind of stuff on. But I imagine there's nudity there now. You know. Well, you can draw nudity on Facebook. As long as it's a drawing, it could be as explicit as hell. But it Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's a drawing. You can't have oh, real wait, people. Oh, wait, what is that? Oh, that? I don't know. It's one of her TikTok things. I don't know. Did, filter on it. And... Oh, and she put a filter on there to make her face like that, right? Yeah. And it says her favorite things, her favorite color, her favorite this. Yeah. What's her favorite color? Blue. Okay. Yeah. What what other favorite stuff does favorite she Favorite candy nerds. Nerds? Favorite, favorite adult, my mom and dad. Yeah. Favorite food is pasta. Favorite subject in school, math and writing. Whew, thank God for that. Wow, that's writing. good. Uh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Sport, tennis, and dance. All of a sudden, she's been having this tennis bug, so we've been going to play tennis. Uh, yeah, it was a neat place. video you put up. Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, she, she, yeah, she's, She's my parents, I, I decided I wanted to try tennis, okay, when I was a kid. And so my parents went out and found a racket for me to use. And I started using it and suddenly realized after a while I was using it like a badminton racket. Oh, you know, it's yeah. kind of oval in shape rather than kind of round. And really thin, long hair. Oh, yeah. So I, I never got in. And I didn't, you know what I didn't like about tennis? Chasing those damn balls. Yeah, so when she hits it, do you think she hits it straight right now? No. And do you guess who goes chase the ball? You have to go <laughs> chasing the ball. So so there's there's tennis courts over here at the at the middle school. There's four and then and then you know it's caged in and then there's four and it's all caged in. So yeah. I tell her the only time we will go is when nobody's playing there at all. So like last night there were some people in this side, but nobody was here. So we go to the far, far side. And then, because she still hits a couple balls going that way, so yeah, yeah. But is but she it, enjoying it? Goes it? to the opposite field. Uh, she she likes it a lot. Yeah, yeah. She really likes it. So it's, I said, oh, it's a very good sport, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd like I like her to get some some. Uh, her dancing is one you know one thing already, but uh, it's nice to get another activity. Seems so. like she's going to be very athletic. I mean, between the dancing and the tennis and so on, that she likes being athletic. Yeah, my side of the family is very athletic. And my, using my her grandma. body for all the right things. Well, yeah, you know, I want to do basketball because she's so tall, but. Yeah. But she says she likes tennis more. I'm okay. I'm not going to push you for basketball. I want you to. Hey, do listen. You. you know, women's basketball is now the thing. Yeah. Do you yeah, know, know that the the ratings for the Final Four, for yeah. the women's basketball, were higher than the ratings for the men's. Yeah, you, they you can't name many guys on there, and then there. You know, a lot of the girls, people know. So I watched the women's game. I didn't watch the men's because I knew it was going to be a blowout. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, what, what what is it about the women's? Do you think that's attracting people? Because it, it's like well, I could understand it if they, I was I could understand if they were all nude, you know. But <laughs> no, no. no, there's some great women there's basketball some good players. Good players, yeah. They're starting yeah. to really develop into good players. I mean, what's, what's what, 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 they could never hit a three three pointer. Now they're throwing them down like no tomorrow yeah yeah but let me ask you this why do you think all of a sudden they did okay they 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 finally became relevant okay i mean it, it, was there a certain emphasis this year put on female oh it's been developing for a while it's been about five or six years i think that it's been you know get better and better yeah but, and you, you yeah. got a couple, per, and you know, a little hangover from last year. You got a couple personalities going at it a little bit, so people want yeah. to see them play this year. Yeah. So that helps, you know. So yeah. But nobody cared about the final four with the men. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you who was in it. <laughs> well, I can tell I you. I know. Bad. I know who won. UConn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where yep. you, UConn. I think is up in Alaska, isn't it? Somewhere up in no. Alaska. <laughs> yeah. 
Jeff, Jeff will say different. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but UConn, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, um, I don't care about the University of Connecticut, do I? Am I supposed to? No. You know. And what was that? What's that one team that they have that Jimmy Kimmel says that the school doesn't even exist? Gonzaga. Gonzaga. <laughs> Gonzaga. Where is Gonzaga? No East, Eastern uh, Washington. Yeah. It's Eastern... like on the border of Washington and Idaho out there. In... Oh, it's in oh, my God. There's <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> wonka wonka hey it'll keep her in shape if nothing else boy she's a, she's a dancer isn't she uh, no she she's a dancer yep I, I i'm downstairs and she does tap also tap competition and i hear her i know where she is all the time i'll hear her go to the bathroom i you know hear her tap down there and then i hear then then, then, then i hear her go, <laughs> go down the hallway and go to her room I took Crazy. tap dancing. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I, I I had a rather mean waltz clog, as they call it, which is the basic step. Uh-huh. I mean, I um, I tried it the other day. I tried to see if I could still do it, and I still know how, the step, but mm-hmm. I can't do it as well because of my neuropathy, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm afraid of tripping, <laughs> but. But you know the basic waltz clog. I do that, and people go, "Oh, you can tap dance." And I go, "No, I can do the waltz clog." <laughs> I also knew four chords on the piano when I go to sit down to play. I get sit down to piano. I do the four chords. They were really cool chords. Okay, they were like just they weren't like majors. They were minors and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. and people go, "Gee, you're really good. Play some more." I said, "Nah, I'm tired for tonight. I don't want to." <laughs> you know. That's how I how I did it, uh, but anyway. So um, uh, no, it, it it was very nice to see that the women are getting there, you mm-hmm. know, the just desserts. Uh, now, if they can get paid something, maybe that'd be nice, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, They're pushing for it. But of course, these are yeah. these are technically amateurs, right? These are not because they're they're uh, colleges, right. universities, but they can make money now. I saw with the first ad the other day that I've seen with a uh, with a basketball player from one of the universities or something who was uh, endorsing a product. Mm-hmm. I'm going, you know, they'd rather have that than than some money from the university. They make a fortune off of that. Yep. Well, yeah, and they have, you know, the college jerseys sell, and they're selling with kids' names on the back, and those yeah. kids don't get any money. I mean, yeah. They so. don't get they don't get money even now. Well, before yeah, before they were getting anything, what's his name? Uh, Bush, right? Reggie Bush. Yeah, that was the big thing that you know they're selling out of jerseys everywhere, and you know he was like what twenty years ago, and he never got a dime for anything. And but now, but do they have to pay them now for those shirts for the for the for the use of their name on those shirts? I don't know. They do. Yeah, it's the NIL. Okay, yeah. because uh, it would seem wrong to me that you sell a shirt with somebody's name on it. And you don't give them a piece of the action, right? You know, I mean, it's like they own the kids. At least it used to be. Well, yeah, exactly. what, what do they used to think that they, you're getting a free education or something? Yeah, or the we, scholarship uh, was taking care of it. But yeah. you know, half of them, you know, they might go through four years of school or five years of school, and they get the hell beat out of them, and then they get nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because saying... they don't make it through. They, they don't make yeah, it to the no, NFL, well, and now all of a sudden mm-hmm. they're they're done and. They got nothing. Yeah, or they're just they not could as be big. hurt. Yeah, they could be a superstar in their school and sell jerseys and make money, and then they go to the pros and they're not as good. And or then, they don't make know, it to the pros. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Most of them don't make it to the pros. Am I right, right. about that? And, yeah, right. So you know, uh, uh, only the top people do. Yes, Jeff. Did yeah. you have your hand up? Yeah, my my granddaughter is a real good uh, athlete. Mm-hmm. And she plays all kinds of things. And and she's at the point where she goes to this temporary games with other, other clinics. Mm-hmm. And they try to find out who's the best kid when they're going to get out of high school, what college they're going to go to, and what kind of skills they have. 
Very you know something? Can I can I say something though that bothers me about this? Sure. You know, it's amazing that a lot of boneheads who play sports can get full scholarships to colleges, but people who have great brains don't get those scholarships. I'm, you know, and I'm sure Charlie would agree with me on that. I mean, as one of those brains, you know, did you get a lot of scholarships to schools? Um, academic. I didn't get any sports scholarships. Yeah, but the sports scholarships are are, are more lucrative, aren't they? Um, because they're like full yeah. scholarships. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can get both. Yeah. And be very good at it. Yeah. I but I I just I just think that some bonehead who doesn't really even have the wouldn't normally be able to get through college, right? Gets a sco full scholarship to college, and then he is like, uh, what can we call? They kind of like they kind of look the other way when he does badly in in the, in his they, studies. No, they, they, they don't eat basket weaving or something, you know, for yeah, the classes. Yeah, they don't even go to class. Yep. No, half of them. My my friend went to school with Jason Kidd, and never saw him in any classes. <laughs> really? And did he graduate? My friend did, yeah, and Jason Jason Kidd's a very famous basketball player. Now he's a coach. Oh, okay. but he was so he yeah, he so Jason Kidd got a scholarship and everything, and he went to Cal, and my friend went to Cal, and said he they knew they never saw him. <laughs> so, wow, wow. He went to Caltech. No, Cal Berkeley. Cal. Oh, Cal. Okay. You know, they, they Cal some of them will go for five years too. Yeah, <laughs> they can wait a year. Right, an extra year, or whatever. Yeah, and they or can six. play. They can play for those five yeah. years. Yeah, they can only play for. And with four COVID, years. some of them went six years with COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, wow. Well, as someone who's never going to money for my daughter, <laughs> as a, as a individual who's never going to get a a um, um, what do you call scholarship either way, I'm just not one to talk. Uh, well, that's one thing I've always, always res respected Northwestern for is they didn't they didn't do that. You had to take real classes. I mean, I had uh, I had football players in my physics classes, and and they were doing the coursework. Oh they yeah, BSing. I think Stanford, Stanford also, right? They have a very very large. Uh, they they're very very strict on that grades and, and everything. For their, In other words, you app. can't just get a scholar, sports scholarship. you got to use yeah. it. Yeah. I know yeah. Oregon is like that as well because my daughter had, had some of the – Bo Nix was in, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of classes that she knows of, and he's, the, you know, the quarterback. He was there for six years, and he took classes. Yeah. And a couple of the defensive players were in one of her classes. But if you're there for six years, do you get to play for six years or yeah. – Really? Well, that was only because of COVID. COVID, yeah. yeah. They had yeah. special, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, wasn't weren't sports kind of suspended during that period of time too? Definitely. Yeah, Somehow. but they had that, you know, they had that bubble thing where they yeah. played and nobody was around and stuff like yeah. that. So they kind of extended they, baseball, things too. Baseball, they put out the 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 card, not cardboard, but the cutouts of people. Cardboard yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I almost bought one too. <laughs> Could you buy those? Oh yeah, yeah you could buy it yourself. Yeah, the Niners were selling them for. I can't remember how much they were worth. They're like. I'm going to the same place I can buy them now, and I'll take down this green screen and just put a whole bunch of people in back of me. <laughs> there you go. You know. Then we'll never call. I think Tony yeah. could buy that. Right? Well, no, I'll also send you all a bunch of those stand-ups too, so you can put them in back of you. You know, <laughs> so be fun. Anyway. So um, let me see here. So everybody's getting really in a, a great anticipation of the Trump trial, which starts Monday, Monday uh, which should prevent, provide us with no end of entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I hear Stormy Daniels. Huh? <laughs> Can't wait to hear Stormy Daniels on the stand. <laughs> yeah. She's looking a little long in the tooth, though. Have you seen her lately? She's getting to look like, you know, an old kind of well, mom you know. who lives in a trailer, you know. <laughs> um, 
she's uh, she's lo- she's not well. I never found her sexy anyway. You know. Um, Are they going to bring in the other one too? What that? What the heck was her name? Um, oh yeah, the, the, the people forget about her. Oh yeah, yes. there was this other woman who. Yeah, they're going to bring her in too. I don't know, dude. A playmate. Yeah, that's yeah. right. She's, it was she's a, a lot better she's looking, nice. actually. Oh, she yeah, was she's great knockout. looking. But here's oh, the yeah. thing. Well, I'm wondering though. Uh, McDougal, they, McDougal, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they, 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 are they, if they're bringing her in, is she part of this case of paying hush money? But they will pay her off too. Yeah, they paid her yeah, off no, too. That, she's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. She's part. So I mean, but but the hush money thing. Are they specifically aiming in on the story? Yeah, is it Daniels one check thing? or two checks? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, uh, I, I just want to hear her testimony. Are you sure it was Donald Trump? Well, nobody has a mushroom dick like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought it was, excuse me, my eyes are burning tonight. Uh, we have allergies starting now. <clears throat> um, uh, I um, Do you remember uh, the whole thing with Bill Clinton? I thought it was just ridiculous that we were talking about him getting head from you know this woman uh it, not in the oval office he took her to a side office to do it mm-hmm. um but i know why he only got head from her because that way he could say and some guys are this way that yeah. i never had sex with that woman and a lot it's of guys that, yeah. including myself don't figure i've had sex with a woman if I, all i got was a you know uh um a swirly or whatever you want to yeah. call it. I'm trying to keep it clean so I don't get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> swirly. <laughs> swirly. You know. Uh, but no, I mean, it, but it was fun to hear that going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and and them all talking about it and everything because this is the government for crying out loud. You know. But anyway, so um, Bree's coming here. Let's see here. Come on, Bree. Flick the switch on. There you go. <laughs> there he is. Oh, Harry, there he is. And we're looking at him between his uh, his two monitors, right? Jail cell. His jail cell. His jail cell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you in jail for? I am not with him. <laughs> oh, no. He's, uh, he's on the plane or private plane. Train. Oh, train! Ah, that's oh, right. Yeah. What? What is that? That he's that it looks? It looked to looks me like, like he's going 190 miles an hour in the window there. Yeah, yeah. but what? It, what is? What is that, Bree? Can you tell us? Oh, you're in a plane. No, no yeah, train, a train. Train, I bet. Is that a train? Let's guess where Bree is now. Where are you, Bree? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, in that case. <laughs> called bfe yeah uh he's he's our version of carmen san diego yes yeah um are you on a train no are you on a plane no bus are you on a bus yes boy those are nice buses yeah look at those seats wow yeah yeah that's nice how many people are on the bus with you? Me? How many people are on the bus with you? Very few today. There are not that many. Yeah. And where are you going on the bus? You're going home? You're going... No. Uh, I'm going down to Singapore for the weekend. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All right. I always like going down to Singapore on the weekend myself. Yeah. Why not? You know? Do the wheels on the and bus then go run around? I'll be back in Thailand. Yeah. In Thailand, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's next month. That's next month. I guess that's an. I should probably go to that part of the world. That sounds like a yeah. nice place to be. It's on you my know. bucket list. Huh? It's on your bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what's on my bucket list: KFC. <laughs> it's on my bucket list. Oh, my. <laughs> I had to say it. Okay, sorry. It's, it's the law. I'm supposed to do that. Uh, but anyway, so so um, 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 we had a major death today. 
Yes, sir. Orenthal is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for him. <laughs> yep, he's still looking for the real guys. <laughs> yeah, well, he, got, he died of, supposedly it was prostate cancer. That's what he said. That's well, he said. there are some people who are disputing that, you know. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm sure. You know, I, I think he was actually killed by Papa Goldman. Uh, you know. Cancer is disputing that. And the cancer is disputing that. Yeah, no, but um, um, how do you how do you feel about that? You know, Marjorie went. I'm glad he's dead. Well, good yeah. for him. Everybody's going to die eventually. Yeah. You know, some earlier than others. He was what 76. Yep. Uh -oh. I got two more years. Huh? <laughs> I got two more years. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he's seventy. He was seventy-six, and um, he got uh, got cancer, got prostate cancer, and uh, you know he's gone. Um, but you know, I mean, if, if he, you know, that whole trial. Pretty much by the time that trial was over, his life was pretty much over. Even though he didn't wasn't found guilty, okay, uh, and his life never got back. To any kind of semblance of, of uh, respect, he didn't help it any either. Huh? He didn't help it any. No, either. he didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, you know, I mean, no, you're right. He didn't do anything to to help it. So, uh, you know, I mean, it it I I uh, I'm going to be doing an interview with Chuck Farnham uh, in a couple of days, and we're going to talk about it because he was at the OJ trial. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, he managed to get into a lot of places. And we should talk about that and all the serial killers he knew. My attorney worked for F. Lee Bailey. My Ooh, attorney, did. really? Yeah. Um, right after he was done, he went into business for himself up there in uh, Marin County. Uh, uh who? A uh, Bailey? No, the my attorney. Oh, okay. I uh, used for my leg. Yeah, Ethley Bailey uh, was one of them, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the attorneys. Another very Johnny famous Cochran. attorney, Johnny Cochran. Who else? Uh, the Kardashian. That's Kardashian. right, Robert Kardashian. <laughs> That's right. Kim's dad. Yeah, yeah. Who, who named himself after his daughters? Uh, yeah. No, but it, it, it Kardashian and and Kardashian. In later years, kind of regretted being part of that team. Mm -hmm. I think he actually felt he was guilty, but he couldn't come out and say it at the time. Yeah. Um, but he, no, he didn't. Uh, he didn't. Uh, uh, he did, he was not happy with it at all. Um, but you know, I mean, the, that legal team did a good job. You know, yep. they did a terrific job, and uh, uh, if I was ever accused of murder, that's the lawyers I would immediately go to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Kardashian is dead, and uh, what's his name is dead. Uh, um, Johnny Cochran is dead, and I believe mm -hmm. is F. Lee Bailey dead. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is oh. Kardashian dead? Yeah, Wrong Kardashian. Yeah, died years yeah. ago. Oh, really? Yeah, he died yeah. when the girls were young, really young. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think I remember that. I just don't remember <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, the, pretty much that whole legal team is gone. I think the guy who did the um, uh, the DNA Ito. stuff. Right, Judge Ito. I think he's dead too, right? Is Judge Ito dead? Judge Ito? Echo, is Judge dead Ito then. dead? <laughs> <laughs> According to an Alexa Answers contributor, sadly he is. Sadly he oh, is. Oh, he's gone. Sadly he is, yeah. She yeah. said it in a very sad voice. Yeah. Sadly, sadly, sadly died in 2021. Oh, really? Yeah. How old was he? He's 87 years old. Really? Yeah. How old? Really? 87. Wow. 87? When did that yeah. trial take place? It, it was, was in 1994. 93? Yeah. Lance Edo is still alive. Huh? Lance Edo is alive. Lance Edo? Oh, Edo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's alive. Oh, is he? Echo, is yeah. Judge Lance Edo alive? 
George Lance Aiken is still alive. He's still alive. He's 73 years old. He's 73 yeah. years old. Okay. Oh. I just said, is Ito alive? And he, you know, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Trial of the century, they called it. Although not this century. That was century. riveting. Huh? And was it, what's the whole story with Hasselhoff, right? Wasn't David Hasselhoff like on the verge of like being a superstar in his singing? And he, they were doing some, some uh, big concert. I think they were, they were putting the concert on TV, like a live concert or some, some concert from Germany or something. And it was going to be played that night. And then all of a sudden that the whole chase happened and, um, and they, 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 killed the his special and that was supposed to like catapult him because he was such a big star in germany and something like that yeah but you ever hear him, you story. ever hear him sing no. <laughs> he pro probably did his career a favor by favor, not yeah. running that <laughs> i was close the oj trial was 1995 Oh, yeah, I was going through my divorce, and I had plenty of time to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Get a room with Cowlings. <laughs> Come on, Nick. I'll never forget that night. My brother was at the Nick game. Me and my mother were watching the game. Mm -hmm. And then they flashed away to the game. They put the game small. We thought he was going to blow his brains out right on TV. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Well, you know, I tell you, I had, a, I had an argument with people constantly <laughs> on the air about this. I'm one of these people that believes that you know, if a person is found not guilty in a court of law, then you have to, in being a good American, assume his innocence. Okay? Uh, and there were people, ah, nah, he's guilty. And I'm going, but you can't do that. You know, you can't do that and have a just, a decent justice system. You know, you have to assume that, hey, uh, you know, you, you can think whatever you want to think, but legally, he's not guilty, you know. Yep. Innocent until proven guilty. Yep. They had his DNA, though. No, no, but it, it, now you're going you know what it was. No, they didn't have, they, maybe they didn't have his DNA. Maybe those those uh, maybe uh, cops was... uh, did, uh, uh, yeah. you know, plant the stuff where they wanted to, like they claimed, okay? And got a jury to believe. I mean, Furman, Furman kind of, Furman fucked the whole case up. Really. He did. He did. He, he did. fucked the case up. Whatever he, he shouldn't have been at the site. Whatever he lied, he planted it. He, they had to take all the shit that he said and throw it out. That's how they lost the case. Yeah. And that's the LAPD. I mean, I mean, do I, it, gun in the head, Alex? Do you think he did it? Do I think he did it? I wasn't there. No, no, but really, I'm being very opinion. honest with you. I wasn't there. All I know is what I heard in the trial. And uh, I, I, you know, if I were, were, if let's put it this way, if I were a uh, um, uh, jurist on that trial, a jury, a juror on that trial, I think I would have voted for acquittal. And I'll tell you why, because I think that you have to sit there as a member of the jury and you only are going to watch what you're allowed to watch. Sometimes they make the, the uh, jury go away for a while while they discuss something and whatever. So mm -hmm. based on what the jury heard, I would think that you might say not guilty, you know, and the case that was being made. Um, now, you can think whatever you want to think, but I think that if I were on that jury, I probably would have voted for acquittal, you know. I mean, what did you hear that proved he was guilty? I mean, I'd have to look at the evidence again, but from what I remember, they had a lot of DNA evidence on him. No, they, they didn't. did. I no, mean, they didn't. They had I'd no, have to look. They had I mean, no, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, people, but I don't think they had that much DNA. I think they did have I DNA. Think they had, I think they had a lot of DNA, and the, the thing was that somebody else was there, actually did it, and he was just there, but they said that that's the only DNA they found. DNA that uh, that he was there at some point. Yeah. So you he know. could have just gone over to see his ex-wife. Yeah. And but then they said, yeah. Out. Then they said, but if there was somebody else, if he was, you know, because they said maybe his son, they yeah. said there was no DNA of anybody else but him. There the only DNA been. they found was his. Yeah. They did have his DNA. When the DNA was left. What? There's no way you can tell when the DNA was left. Right. It could have been left a week before the murder. 
I mean, the state did not do a very good job of proving that. Does not fit, and if they don't fit, they <laughs> don't fit. fit. Yeah, that was smart by him because the glove probably shrunk. Well, from that yeah, one. the gloves probably uh, shrunk. So you know, my friend, my friend, he probably posted it too. So my friend's a big 49er fan. They've had tickets forever. When he was doing, when OJ was doing the announcing at one of the games, my friend got a picture with him, and he has gloves on. I guess, oh, like, I like to see that sentence. <laughs> <from me. laughs> I'll never forget my brother. He's going to kill himself, Anthony. I said, wow, we may be seeing this live. I said. Well, I have some video of, of, of uh, OJ because I, when I was at the Olympics in Barcelona, mm-hmm. we, went up to the, uh, we went up to this church up on the, uh, on the hill, and mm-hmm. uh, OJ was walked right by me, and I took some video of him. Uh, you know, so I think, in fact, I still have the footage somewhere. I think it's in my locker in California. You know what I was going to ask you too, Alex. I I told this to my sister. I don't know. If I, I kind of hope the the family does a uh, where they give the brain where they could do the CT scan where if he had that disease because I have a feeling he had he had a mental illness where he got hit too many times in football. Well, I I, 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 I see it with that. Well, there's always that possibility. But then still, he actually, if that, but if still that was getting true, hit in the head repeatedly, getting up. hit in the head repeatedly still does not excuse you from killing your wife. Okay. No, but these guys could kill another guy. Oh, you, you had a brain injury? Oh, go ahead, kill a few more people while <laughs> you're at it. You know. It's but still sad. He was a hell of a football player. He was I, how, I never saw him. How great was he, John? Anyway, what? He a, a, for two thousand yards in like fourteen games. You forget a great actor. Hurts. Oh, Those were great well, concussions. Remember, <laughs> jumping over with the suitcase. He was entertaining as an actor. I'll say he that. Was. He was funny. I thought. Wasn't he in the Naked? Uh, was he in the yeah, Naked? Yeah, Naked Gun. Naked Gun. Yeah, naked he was doing Leslie Nielsen. I liked it. Yeah, I liked the juice actually. Yeah. I liked the juice, actually. I I mean, he he could run the football. Well, I mean, he at one point was one of the most uh, bankable people in the in the business because he was very likable. He had what they call a good Q rating. You know, yeah. everybody loved the juice. You know. You know what I was going to tell you, Alex? I found the clip. He was on the Lucy show on the One in Color. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I just saw it on YouTube before I was looking at it. I was like, Holy shit. He was, oh, the juice was with Lucy. How dangerous can he be? <laughs> yeah. You know, but I mean, he, he was a very. He was really uh, old. They, they, they loved using him in commercials because they yeah. could sell a lot of product perfect. with him. He had one of the most uh, perfect um, reputations yep. of anybody in the business. I mean, all America loved him, and then he—I don't know—he got grouchy one night and maybe killed his wife, and they don't like him anymore. Yeah. You know. But Chris, I you know Chris Rock. Chris Rock has—he has a really good whole thing about that whole thing. It, it was—it was really funny, and he. You know, he talked. He just talks about you know giving back then. He was OJ was giving her like twenty five thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. for you know for uh, child support. And he he would just say that you know he 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 doesn't know if he's guilty, but he understands. You know, and, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you got you got this young kid driving your Ferrari that you gave to yes, your ex wife. He goes, I don't know if he killed her, but I understand. I you know? understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got this kid living at her, her house, fucking her guy. You know, this is so funny. Yeah. Well, it was kind of like uh, who? Who was it? Uh, maybe it was Chris Rock. I'm trying to remember who was me. Oh no, it was uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 you know, Chappelle. It's Chappelle. I like yeah. Chappelle. Chappelle, yeah. who was talking about uh, about uh, about uh, Cosby, and saying, oh, you know. Cosby donated an incredible amount of money to scholarship funds to black yeah. colleges, yeah. and he did uh, did all kinds of benefits to raise money for scholarship funds. It was his big deal, supporting college scholarship funds, supporting black youth to go to college, and so on. He said, and then he, he gets this thing thrown at him, and he says, "You got to take the good with the bad." <laughs> He says, you know, everybody suddenly forgets all the good that Cosby did. And he yeah. said, we should remember that part of it, too, yeah. you know. And he was clean. And he he was clean. Remember that one special he had? Yeah. I watched that thing a hundred times. I could tell you, I could read that thing almost 
from start to finish. It was so hilarious. But then you got the other side, you know. <laughs> so, he always worked. I can't bring myself to throw away all these LPs I got of his. <laughs> hey, listen, he was he was a great stand-up comic. Yeah, that's still you know, funny. But the question is, do we throw out Which the good? Probably, do we throw but... out the good with the bad? And no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. You know, if he, he was a great but comic. I think a lot of people do, they do all that good. Mm -hmm. And then they think that that gives them the right to do the bad in a way. Uh, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah. I don't, you know. Yes, 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 yes. I agree. You know, that. I think that what Cosby did was despicable. I mean, yeah. Okay. I if if he did it, and apparently he did, and he was found guilty of it, so I can say yeah. that um, it was despicable. But yeah. uh, you know, at the time when he first started doing that, it was not uncommon for some well, people to take that opportunity to drug women, to do all kinds of things and not have to have any consequences for their actions. Mm -hmm. So in the period of time when he did it, it there were a different set of values. Now that's not to say they were right, yeah. Yeah, you really know, nice. but the question, the, the question is, do you hold somebody to account for that if at the time when he did it, like the, these um, uh, producers, mm -hmm. we all yeah. knew, we all talked about the casting couch in Hollywood. Right? We knew it existed, and we laughed a little when we talked about it, you know. And um, while I would never use it if I were uh, in that position, because that's not the kind of person I am, I understand that if it was a common practice there, that a lot of people would do it. And then when it was suddenly wrong to do it, mm -hmm. if they kept doing it as Weinstein kept doing then they're guilty of something. But if they stopped, do we hold them to account for that mindset at that time? I mean, I can think terribly of that person, but do they have to be held account for it? You know? Um, who is Eddie F? I don't know who Eddie F is. Uh-oh. Neither do we. Okay, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I will just, I, I, I will put my face up here. See, yeah, and, we still have to oh see wait a minute, that. he hung up. He hung up already. Okay, mm. well, <laughs> Alex, and I, none of us can imagine this. Only you have a taste of this. Is I think when these stars get so big and everybody, you know, is yes, 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 and, and wants to be there and do everything and and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a taste. Like Brie was saying, Brie was starting to say, it's like, geez, you think you can get away with anything? You know, it's like everybody's there well, telling you what you can do. I mean, you had some of that, right? I well, I mean, I, I you know, that. I had my share of uh, good sex with women who I mean, want, <laughs> want wanted to have sex with me because I was, uh, I used to right. be a big shot, right? Uh -huh. And uh, I guess some of them could come back that. and accuse me of something if they were crazy enough. But I was always a gentleman about it. I would never force somebody into that. You know, they would almost right. have to make the move. I would not make the move. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I uh, see some of these stars I are so good. I never took advantage of that. Yeah. I, I never really took advantage of it. Yes, Tony. Well, I was going to ask you this. Did it ever bother you, Alex? You're going to ask me this? Okay. Yeah, I'm very to say, yeah, I better move to the here. side when you ask me yeah. the question. Did you ever get annoyed though, like when somebody would say, like, not that I'm meaning in a bad way, like when they wanted to be your friend, say, because say if you had certain clout, did you ever get turned? Like, I could see, like, I would get a little turned off, like I, I wouldn't know who to trust anymore. Then you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, who do you know? Yeah, that's you know, true. Like, I didn't. I had, I had a hard, I had a hard time trusting a lot of women who would yeah. come on to me. They could trap you, no? Well, no, they couldn't. Tra in those days, there wasn't that going on. But they could trap you in one way or another. You know, I had one woman who I never met in my life tell her father I got her pregnant. She used to listen to me on the radio every morning. And when he said, who got you yeah, pregnant? Yeah, I remember that. Really? She, oh, she, she, The first name she could come up with is me. So now I get a call from the father saying to me too. how do you got my daughter pregnant i said who's your daughter and he said whatever her name was or whatever i said uh listen i've had sex with a lot of women in my life but she isn't one of them you know i never met her in my life i said I, she's lying i got a uh, i got a 
Hmm? I got a weekend gig because of something similar to that. Uh, yeah. This club called me up and, you know, I, I worked on the college station. They said, can you DJ at the club? And I said, yeah. well, yeah, I can spin records. And uh, so I, I, I said, why do you need me? Why isn't DJ Spike doing it? And uh, they told me, they said that there was a there was a father who was coming around to find him. And he had to lay low for three days. So they gave me the job. <laughs> and, and I thought, I hope he knows what DJ Spike looks like. Yeah. <laughs> And that I'm not him because I'm going to be in the DJ booth. And sure enough, there was a guy who came, this big guy, and he came and looked at me, and and then he left. But I knew that was the father who was looking for the other DJ. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, so I mean, these kind of things happen, you know. Um, yeah. But that was a different time. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some women out there could be great. I don't think I I thought about my entire life back then. And try, mm. I tried to remember all the women that I had had sex with, and I have to admit to you, I don't remember all of them. Uh, mm. uh, the good ones, the good ones I remember. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I kept trying to think, is there any woman out there that could say something about me who wasn't crazy, okay, and, and made erroneous claims? And I thought about it, and I said, no. You know, there really aren't. Um, but I don't know that maybe one of them wasn't a little crazy, you know, and would just say I did something to her that I didn't. Because I was always a gentleman, you know. I never wanted to have sex with anybody who wouldn't have want to have sex with me. Okay, so uh, uh, I always waited for the, the woman to come on to me before I would do anything. Uh, so, you know, it, it's uh, all... It's, all water under the bridge, but you know, I mean, as as Chappelle said, he did on one of his specials about Cosby. He just said, "You got to take the good with the bad," you know, and 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 he did a lot of good stuff, and we shouldn't forget that just because he did a lot of bad stuff. So, anybody disagree with that contention? <laughs> wouldn't trust any of my girls who are friends around him. That's all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, how many? So I, what was? Uh, do you remember? Do you remember, Alex? What was the? What was the penalty for Cosby? The penalty because I, I remember hearing that. I thought it was too much. Well, he got sent to prison. Yeah, he I, was I prison. think what was it? Fifteen years, something for like that. Long? And I think they released yeah, see, him. No, I, they released him. I don't think they released him on a technicality. I think it was because of his. Because he was blind. He was yeah, blind. Blind. Yeah. He was, he was blind. They I mean, didn't want to have to put like braille on all the uh, yeah, all the Weinstein. elevators and stuff like that. Well, didn't know. Weinstein do the same thing? All of a sudden, he got blind or something. He, no, he wasn't blind. He, was, and, he couldn't walk. He was walked in with a with a walker. Oh and, my and, God! And these so. guys. So well, you know, I think to begin with. All right, this is how I always felt about Weinstein. A terrible person. Terrible what he did to these women. The, the kind of power he wielded, and then he used that to make them feel, if nothing more, terribly uncomfortable and at the most terribly horrible about themselves in the aftermath. Just a terrible human being. Um, Love you know, but everybody in Hollywood knew what Weinstein was doing. I knew it, and I was in San Francisco, and I was never in Hollywood, and I knew about it. It, it everybody in show business knew about Weinstein, and when they somebody'd say, "Oh, Weinstein uh, came on to me, he showed up uh, uh, without his bathrobe on or whatever," they go, "Well, we told you not to go up to Weinstein's room," you know. So people knew this for years, and yet when they finally catch him. Oh, this is terrible. This is horrible. Well, you know who's also culpable and guilty? All the other people who knew what he was doing and didn't say anything about it because they were afraid that Hollywood would take out reprisals on them if they had said anything about it. So, you know, it's a bunch of people being hypocrites in Hollywood, if you want my opinion. I still think it's you know I think I don't know how many how many years did he get like three thousand years or something I don't know. Um, what was it today? I'm there was somebody got got uh, um, um, a sentence of something like thirty five years for doing something. And I looked at Marjorie and I said, "Isn't that a bit much?" 
You know, we give out these very heavy, high sentences for everything, which they don't do. Will you agree with me on this, Bree, in countries you've been in? When they send people off to jail, it's not like for 35, 40 years, right? They give them a reasonable sentence, send them to prison, and hope that, yeah. you know, they, you know, but, but it might be 10 years yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah but don't they? Oh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Uh, let, me, let me hear what uh, Bree has to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it depends on which country you're in. But, yeah, like in Singapore, they they want to get you readjusted, get you back into society. Yeah. Um, you know, the recidivism rate. Yeah. And in, yeah, in, in the states uh, are responsible because if you, you know, we, we have different levels of lawyers, public defenders, mm -hmm. and different states and different politicians. You know, so all of that gets mixed in, up. In Singapore, don't they have whipping? Caning. Caning. Remember the kid? Caning. They have caning. Yep. Yeah. 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 The kid, fact, remember? Though, though, what was interesting, there was a story recently about a, uh, I forget where this business was. I, uh, somewhere in Asia, I don't want to label the country, but there was a cafe where the employees would get caned if they were late for work. Oh, and, geez. Uh, and I read about this. You can Google it. And the owner said, um, well, he used to dock their pay. He would take away pay. But then they collectively, they voted that instead of getting docked their pay, they would prefer to be caned. But it... Hmm. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's 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 certainly weird caning. and, ch and so changed. Wife could only get half. Yeah, that's You true. can look that up on Google. It's true. Wow. Wow. But it, at one point, didn't they have laws? And I remember this back in probably the 70s or 80s that they would actually put people in jail for long periods of time for littering in Singapore. Yeah. You remember that kid? Yeah. That kid got caned, I mean, right? Yeah, he got I mean, that's, that's what I, when I used to work. Didn't when he I get, used to work yeah. over there, I talked to the guys that used to fly over here from Singapore almost uh, once a week. And they were dying to get over here to America for you know a week while they sat here. But they were couriers, and they'd tell us the horror stories about that shit. Oh no, you don't drop a piece of paper, or they'll put you in jail for it. But wasn't there a kid like in the eighties, an yeah, American yeah, kid, and yeah. he spit gum? Did he spit gum out yeah. on the street or something? Yeah. And they, he got sentenced yeah. to caning or something? No, it wasn't. No, that wasn't. He did more than that. Oh, okay. But yeah. Yeah. But there you can see. There's the case. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Oh yeah. Like, readable. Hot pot. Hot yeah. pot eatery. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Where was it? Let me see where that was. Um, yeah, but no. Michael Fay was. That's a long story, but everybody in Singapore knows that name. Ah. Uh, he was doing vandalism. Uh, oh he was, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was. So, necessarily talk yeah. about that case by the way all, before but... we go uh close off tonight i want to say oh, so, somebody highlight. nailed it last night and said that with his new haircut um um uh, tony looks exactly like zippy the pinhead i like it too <laughs> look at that see the face look at it, it, is, it it's, it's, it's zippy it is. the pinhead yeah, i do it's so you know i do look a little bit like that <laughs> <laughs> and my mother always liked this haircut, Alex. I always had to get it short. Yeah, you get, you get. Anyway, Alex, is Jack is Jack on after you tonight? Uh, no, no, he's not. Jack's Jack not off. on after me Jack ever off. again. Jack off. Jack's off. Jack's oh, off. Jack. That's right. It's Amy. Amy Manuel. Amy's on. Jack Amy's off. There. Uh, I yeah. still never figured out how to do Skype to her. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, hey, listen, that's it for us right now, and I'm playing the theme song. I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to thank uh, Brian for joining us and the uh, lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace and Kevin and uh, Jeff and, of course, uh, from uh, 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 Malaysia uh, on a bus, which uh, those are lovely buses. Uh, we've got the, uh, the musical strains of, uh, of Brie. And finally, Tony, thank you so much to all of you and every one of you. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as well. There they go, folks. That's our people. Okay. Yeah, it's really, what a time we have here. 
where I do these shows and I can have somebody in, uh, in like me in New York and with just as clear a picture on a bus traveling through, th through uh, uh, Thailand or you know Malaysia or whatever. It's amazing. Just an amazing time technologically. Anyway, Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, <laughs> with the, oh boy, uh, with her program, and she'll be taking your calls at uh, on Skype at uh, at uh, can I, the intersection. Okay, she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Push the wrong button.